Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us at the 81st Venice Film Festival. Maybe you could begin with an introduction to Stranger Eyes. What can audiences expect when they go into your film? Stranger Eyes is a film about the lives we live in now, uh, being seen and also seeing, and that relationship between, between that because these days we are being watched by so many forces around us, whether is it the state, the, the, the big corporates and each other through social media, living in such unprecedented times of um, being so intensely watched. Um, and this is what the film is about. And um, where did you get the initial inspiration for the story? What's, what sparked this idea of exploring this idea you know, of, of surveillance? From my everyday life. Uh, yeah, we live in um, cities now that are so tightly packed and densely populated. You know, I, I, I open the window and I see my neighbours, my neighbours look at me and you know, it's like a daily ritual of watching each other. But at the same time, I know that actually a surveillance camera is watching me, you know. So it's like uh, the state is watching me, watching someone else. So this idea of like um, seeing and being seen all come together in this way. Of course, that's a, something that can be true for, for many places across the world. But would you say this is particularly pertinent in Singapore? And you know, how important is, is that setting and the location? And you know, if it being such a densely uh, packed place, perhaps there is that feeling that there is nowhere you can be, that you're not somewhere being watched. Absolutely, because Singapore, as you say, it's really small. There's, there's nowhere to get out off the grid, to, uh, to put it this way, right? It's probably a fact that you can search on the internet and it will always be ranked one of the you know, top five cities that are most surveillance per capita in terms of surveillance cameras. I mean, it's something that, you know, as, as, as someone living in Singapore, you, you internalise this, you, you know that you know, walking down the streets every 15 minutes, you would encounter, you know, at least three surveillance cameras. So you're being watched. And in Singapore, that, that, that is the case, yeah. I guess when you watch it, it sort of resists any easy categorization in, in terms of its genre. And the look and feel of it, what were you taking inspiration from? Was that from other films? Was it from other genres? You know, would you, would you say it's kind of a thriller? How would you put it into words? The film presents itself as a kind of surveillance thriller, right? It's nothing new, right? I mean, we have a whole tradition of cinema that is about the idea of the voyeur and surveillance in cinema. I mean, cinema really loves the voyeur in that sense, right? And then it starts to sort of open itself up because I'm, I'm a fan of the genre and the, the way that the genre codes kind of invite the audience into being a very active participant of, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the process, you know, of wanting to find out a little bit more about what's going on. The way you put it together, you know, the aesthetic of it, but particularly the way you integrate you know, video footage, the characters watching videos of someone else watching them. There's sort of so many layers to that. And how does that then influence their actions in return? Um, how did you sort of make that work logistically, but also what do you hope audiences can take from that? Well, I, I, making this film, I was very interested in, um, in the idea of the image. Sometimes I'm feeling that we are increasingly becoming images for others more so than anything else, you know. At some point, we're, I'm starting to feel like the image has become more real than me, <laughs> you know. The image of myself has become more real than me. I mean, we're putting out images on our social media all the time. We're becoming images for surveillance, for, for all kinds of um, observations. Yeah, I, I really wanted to explore the idea of the image in this film. And that's also where you see the, the, the screens, within the screens, within the screens in, in this film. And it becomes a very important uh, sort of a theme in the film that way, yeah. And the characters are, are so fascinating and, and nuanced and they really sort of, you know, the arcs really shift as you go through the film. You don't feel like you're ever on solid ground or, or, or what, quite what to make of them. Um, how did you craft your characters, but in particular, how did you sort of cast them and work with your cast to develop them as well? I think for me, it's very important that a film about watching and seeing others is also a film about perspectives and about points of view, right? So it was important that when I crafted this story, when I constructed it, it was never really from a, a, a God's point of view of the absolute, you know? It's, it's always about whose perspective is it, whose point of view is it, what are we seeing and what are we not seeing, importantly? 
and that's something that I work a lot with the with, with my cast and my crew and all, all, all the people who was working on it. We wanted to create sort of little pastiche or little collages of, of, of points of view that tells you not the whole truth, but a construction of what could possibly be. And in terms of what people can take away from the film, the way of sort of exploring this idea of surveillance, exploring how we react when we're constantly looking at images of ourselves, you know, what does that do to our identities? Like you say, does the image become more real than you are? It's a bit like with social media, you know, if you don't put it on social media, did it happen? So I guess, yeah, on, on one sense, people can go along for the ride of, of, of the thriller, but perhaps they can also be coming out with a lot of questions and, and self-reflection on what it can mean for individuals, but also for, for us as a society. Absolutely, because for me, uh, the act of watching is, is not a passive one. You're not just sitting there watching. It's a very active uh, process because I think for me, you know, it's like watching someone intently. Um, at least it happens for me that I start to pick up little gestures, you know, I, I, start, I might start to imitate them, I might start to even take on certain phrases from, from people that, I, that I've been watching. And it's, it's, uh, it's a transformative process, you know, it, it changes you. Just as well, being watched changes your behaviour, of course, right? We know, we, we know this for a fact, like, if I know that I'm being seen, I'm not going to you know, dig my nose, for example, right? Being watched changes the way you, you behave. And, and so this whole idea of seeing and being seen constructs your identity in a, in a very, very crucial way. And I think it also makes uh, a point of, you know, this isn't just people when they're out and about, but it's also their very intimate moments. And I guess, again, with social media, we can think about maybe that, that barrier that there used to be in the past of like, okay, there's something performative about being out there in the world, but you also have this sort of private self and your intimate moments, but maybe that's coming down. And is there anything such as a private moment anymore? So was that also an interesting concept to discover? For sure, for sure. I mean, like in the film, the families, uh, they, they are living in a, in a small apartment, right? Like, and in the case of in Asia, a lot of times we also live with our parents, the grandparents, even aunts and like, yeah, it's like a whole community living in a small space. And at the same time, now being even more interconnected, supposedly through technologies and all of these things. But then I'm also starting to feel like, you know, even though we are, we are feeling so much more connected, we are also so much more alienated from each other, you know. We are, we are becoming almost more and more detached from each other even though it's so easy to and so convenient now to be able to communicate with each other. Yeah, and definitely by the end of the film, that feels like a key, it's, you know, about that, that sense of loneliness and isolation and alienation. Perhaps it could sort of make people go out into the world and crave that face-to-face -face connection. And then particularly, I guess, post-pandemic as well, that's something that maybe people haven't quite recovered yet. So do you think that's also something that's in the air at the moment? I really hope. I really hope that people, you know, watch the film and be able to feel that way. Because at the end of the day, cinema for me is a very communal experience. It's, 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 it's about coming together. It's about, you know, watching a film together and then going for dinner after and talking about the film and, you know, or, 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 or have a meal before. It's, it's the, the, the communal experience of, of cinema. It's, it's really important to me. And finally, what does it mean to you to have your film here at the Venice Film Festival? And what do you think you'll take from this experience and to your next project? Of course, being here, to, it's, it's a really amazing experience. Um, it's, it's also the first time uh, a Singapore film is, is competing in the main competition. And that's kind of historic for, for myself and my, 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 the people back home who are rooting for, for, for me in the film. So it's, it's, uh, it's a really rewarding experience for me. I just hope that uh, the film itself is able to, to, to gain more, more life, you know, after this, to be seen by more people. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me. Huge thank congratulations you. on the film. Thank you, thank and you. And really enjoy the rest of the time here in Venice. Thanks so much. Thank you.